Hello, friends, and welcome to World Build With Us, the podcast where we create fantastical worlds with help from you, our listeners. My name is Rob Hilferney, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Daniel Quinn and Courtney Staples. On today's episode, we have a first-time submitter and patron, James V. So, first of all, huge thank you for submitting a prompt, and also thank you for joining our Patreon. Seriously, that's incredibly cool of you. And not only is James V uh, a new patron and submitter, but we also have Cam who joined our Patreon recently as well. So a big thank you to both of you and all of our patrons for your continued support and interest. Uh, Seriously, thank you so much for everything that you do. And of course, if you want to join our Patreon, like our two new patrons did, and get access to sweet, sweet patron-only content, you can click the link on our website where you can follow it to our Patreon and pledge money or consider it a tip, really. That's all through our website where you can submit your own prompt. That's worldbuildwithus.com. Again, click the link, follow some instructions, and within a reasonable amount of time, we'll be building your world. You can also follow us on social media over on Twitter at Let's World Build. And if you want to come join our Discord and chat with us more directly, please do so. If you have questions, if you want to share some world building stuff, go ahead and do so over on the Discord with a link for that in the description and on our website. Oh, and I almost forgot we have a YouTube now. This is very important that we talk about this because it's brand new. We just added it like fairly recently. So go Uh, If you want to support us or if you just want a different way to listen to us, you can go to our YouTube channel. You can uh, click like, you can click subscribe, you can downvote us, upvote us, whatever. Do whatever you want on YouTube. I don't care. Just go to the YouTube and interact with it in some way. That's where you can do that. Anyway, let's, let's go ahead and roll right into the prompt submitted by James V. The prompt starts ages ago. This large world with four elemental moons suffered a cataclysm. One of the four moons shattered and fell upon the surface, nearly destroying the planet. Even now, the only thing keeping the world from complete destruction is the interference from a higher, much more alien power. The ancient advanced civilizations of the past all fell to ruin ages ago, and any surviving people reset to a much earlier era, somewhere between the Bronze and Iron Age. However, some ancient tech has survived and can occasionally be recovered from the ruins that dot the scarred world. On to the tenets. Tenet number one, a world-spanning superstructure floats in space and encircles the equator of the planet, an artificial ring housing an entity of great power. While this entity's motives are largely unknown, the superstructure does appear to be scanning and occasionally manipulating the world from time to time from orbit. Many have come to believe this entity is attempting to protect the world without making direct contact with the people on the surface. Tenet number two. This world had four moons, each tied to one of the four elemental planes. The Earth moon broke apart into a rocky planetary ring that constantly falls upon the world in meteor showers. Rare star metals like adamantine and mithril are plentiful where the moon shards fall, but so are dangerous minerals that can make people sick. And our third and final tenet, the remaining moons of fire, water, and air orbit in an unstable balance just outside the superstructure, and the rocky ring that was the Earth-aligned moon casting their horrific mutating energies across the surface. While lycanthropy has always been a problem with the many moons, Recently, there have been reports of attacks from elemental empowered lycanthropes. Woo! Well, there's a lot to dig into on mm-hmm. this one. Uh, I'm I'm pretty excited. I got elemental moons. I've got potential for werewolves. So, Daniel, why don't you start us off with your first tenant? I have to say um, the same thing I said about the previous prompt. Um, which first of all, thank you for sending a prompt for the first time and also becoming a patron, which is nice. But this is a clown car tenant, clown car prompt rather. <laughs> we we open the, the prompt and a ton of tenants pop out like clowns. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when that happens in my mind, I take the liberty of either ignoring or taking <laughs> as a suggestion some of the tenants mm-hmm. that didn't quite fit into the clown car. 
Um, so that being said, <laughs> my my first tenant here is that I um, there are some mainstays like multiverses and um, what else do we have that, that keeps recurring? Um, capitalism. <laughs> capitalism. No, that- no, um, be like, well, that is a mainstay. I'm never bored of making uh, capitalism the villain. Never. Uh, for me, it's Ring World. Yeah, Ring I World. Would say Ring World is another one. Recursion, in a certain sense, is also kind oh, of yeah. a theme of our yeah. that we tend to. Get. My point is like the repeated things kind of can get tedious. So my tenant is um, whatever this lycanthropy is, it cannot be traditional werewolves. Mm. Oh, hey, that uh, that actually completely works with my tenant because as much as and, and you know me i love werewolves werewolves mm-hmm. are among my favorites but if, if i may interject daniel can i can i offer you my tenant instead sure like my i, I my... also have a tenant related to this. oh boy god damn it <laughs> yeah. so okay. i'll just let me set the stage then for yeah. my prohibition um and then <laughs> we'll do whatever with it like i don't want I don't want werewolves and I don't want um, some variation of werewolves where it's like, oh, it's not giant dog people. It's giant bear people because that's just so fucking werewolf. It needs to be some unique take on lycanthropy. That's what I'm interested in. Hmm. OK, so so Courtney, do you also have something to do with this? Because I've got oh, boy, do I have something to do with this? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think mine works well with Daniels, though, maybe. My, mine does too so okay. i mean what, what you know we'll go in order we'll have okay. a conversation like adults courtney what is your tenet that you're introducing here all right so mine is that each moon is associated with different types of animal shapeshifters um mm-hmm. based on the prohibition of werewolves maybe the earth moon that's the one that crashed into the, mm-hmm. the planet um maybe that was associated with werewolves and I guess wear bears as well. So maybe like mammalian based shifting or something. Mm-hmm. So then we could do something else with the other moons and have it be weird and, and different. Fabulous. Yeah. I'm okay with that. As long as there's no actual werewolves. <laughs> That's my well, Daniel, tenant. What about like where fish? <laughs> Bear fish is fine. I do not okay. want, I, I lycanthropy means generally in fiction, we take an animal and a and human turns into the animal. So if that's our whole idea, it's just the same old thing. So it's got to be different than that. That's my, that's my all right. Okay. So again, if I may interject, so you want to talk about clown cars, Daniel, get ready for this one. Right. So each elemental moon houses a demon Lord. And uh, what has happened is there are cults that are devoted to each elemental moon and when you beseech these moons, you are not becoming an animal. You are becoming infused with demonic essences. So those reports of elemental empowered lycanthropes are actually just demon infused cultists. So uh, each mm-hmm. demon lord has a different element that they're associated with and they have their various oh, demonic influences and stuff like that. So yeah, they're they're not lycanthropes. They're just straight up demon worshipers. And I thought that would be a fun little subversion. Plus there's kind of like a callback to the Temple of Elemental Evil and return to Temple of Elemental Evil as well. So the understanding of two things here, Courtney is saying each of the moons presents a different kind of transformation. Is that fair to s- mm-hmm. summary? Yeah. And then you're saying that in the moons, there is an entity specifically demonic that um, bestows this power of transformation upon people and its different flavors because of Courtney's. Correct. Okay. I, I mean, there, there are myriad demon lords, right? There's demon lord of fish and demon lord of fangs <laughs> and stuff like that. So I'm like, oh, there, there we go. We just make them elemental demon lords, and there, it's not um, animal transformation. They're like huffing essence of demon and becoming warped and twisted by demonic energies. And okay. it just so happens cool. that they look elemental because of the moons that are associated with them. Got it. Okay. Cool. So that way we can have the transformation be something non-standard. You know. Yeah. Oh boy, is it non-standard in my eyes? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, in, in my brain, the way that I see this is that, uh, so old druidic kind of rituals, they would often involve like huffing of like fumes and stuff like that. Think mm-hmm. of like the Oracle of Delphi or think of like, uh, Norwegian, like bone rollers and druids and shamans and stuff like that. Right. Where it's like you're huffing fumes and then you get infused with that. 
I want that. But when you when you huff these fumes, like there is a soul of a demon that you're huffing in. And so there's like this, mm. like it, it's something that's literally burning your soul with it. So there's this cool spiritual effect that's like overlaid on top of you that gives you this incredibly vivid and wild looking kind of appearance that's also like ephemeral in some ways as well. Okay, that's cool. I wonder if that too can tie in with that tenet in the prompt about um, the dangerous minerals that are making people sick when they fall to the earth from the earth moon. Like maybe it's like intensely pure demonic essence so if you, Courtney, if you could or... if, if you could stop jumping to my second tenant oh, I'm sorry. I'm that sorry. would be really great okay. thank yep. you yes yep. <laughs> <laughs> but but okay we, we've done our round we're all very excited about lycanthrope like things right so daniel do you want to start us off with your second tenant then sir so, uh, so I guess I can throw a wrench against your demons. Um, uh, oh, shock, <laughs> surprise. No way. Yeah. Um, so this, and it <laughs> says, though, in this world, lycanthropy is not an affliction and those gifted with it are revered as sacred, except um, for the ones that are radioactive. OK. So they're all just happily demon worshiping. <laughs> we're, yep. we're pro demons here. Well, pro demons. Yeah. Well, hold on, because. I specifically said that this isn't lycanthropy. This is like straight up demon stuff. So what your tenet implies, Daniel, is that lycanthropy exists and is revered. Mm, no, because re lycanthropy originally referred to the transformations. That's what I'm referring to. Mm -hmm. So my tenet says in this world, lycanthropy is not an affliction. At least it's not viewed as yeah. one. And those gifted with it are revered as sacred. So it doesn't mean that they have to be good. It just means that they have to be revered as sacred. Um, except for the radioactive ones. They're bad. <laughs> okay, what are, the, what are the radioactive ones? What do you... The tenant um, refers to the Earth Moon as creating some kind of radioactivity because it was destroyed. Ah, okay, yeah. okay, gotcha, gotcha. So I'm thinking, like, in my mind, following what you're saying about, like, you know, the Oracle huffing, whatever... And it's kind mm -hmm. of like there being these druidic rituals and that perhaps the demonic essence is not viewed as like an evil essence, but something yeah. that grants people a power that is revered mm -hmm. by the regular people. Gotcha. OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we can we can do something like that. So like from our view, it's definitely like, oh, you're sacrificing your soul for the good of your people type thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. So, I mean, it's got it's got straight up like post apocalyptic, like we've got to do what we can to survive so our children can have an opportunity to not live in a demon infested, you know, like hellscape. Uh -huh. OK, I mean, sure, we we can definitely do that. That's no problem. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, just because they're demons doesn't mean that everybody has to be opposed to them. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they're, everybody's just happily worshiping uh, <laughs> yeah. demon cults. Friendly mm -hmm. demon worshippers. Yeah. I think it would be neat to have, because um, it seems like the explosion of the Earth Moon has changed the status quo in some way. And so mm -hmm. I, I wonder if the sort of transformation that was granted by it, like, is is now is very different than the one granted by the other demon moons. Because I'm thinking, mm -hmm. like, okay, if the moon blew up and it's collapsing on the planet, and there's demons in them, perhaps this moon's demon is now unleashed upon the world yeah. in some way. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah, exactly. And and I imagine the others who worship or don't worship but are infused by the other demons, Ooh. like they must be like, oh, that's not nice. We got to stop that, you know? Yeah, okay. that could be cool. I, I like that idea a lot because what I'm thinking now is that like the moons are themselves a prison. Mm -hmm. And so what's what's happening is that the essence that's being bestowed upon the people is filtered through the moon. So it's like, yes, I'm huffing like demon fumes or whatever, and it is evaporating my soul slowly. Like when the demon is out, like broken out of its cage, yeah, like exactly. its essence is far more dangerous and far mm -hmm. more like wild and corrupting and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, that, that totally makes sense to me. It's like it's taking over, right? In some way, you know, trying to. Yeah, right. Like you have less control or like, Maybe there's like a radiation, like mutate. There's a mutant aspect to these particular kind of earth elemental infused demons. That's different, right? Right. Yeah, it's sort of the difference between 
I don't know, spritzing yourself with a lightly scented demon perfume versus like <laughs> chugging down demon essential oils and uh, right, <laughs> going right. to town on this. Uh, right. I, I suppose. Yeah, that's that's kind of you're you're exactly right, Courtney. It's about the moderation, right? Like everyone mm-hmm. enjoys a couple of drinks with some friends after a long day at work. But like no one's going to be like, hey, let me let me down this pint of moonshine that my Uncle Tom made. Like, you know, it's like, oh, oh, those are two different things. Like one's a problem and one is social. Right. Like you can see the difference in the its temperance. Right. Also, moonshine. What if there oh, are? Oh, act- what, if there, what if there's actually like beverages made out of this uh, demonic stuff? Ooh. I'm glad to see that you didn't hear me after I said moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> your, your brain shut off. Like I got to go there. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. frankly, respect. I totally respect <laughs> it. And yes, drafts of like demon liquid. I actually think that's cooler. Could, could it be like their fluid that the fluid of the person possessed in some way? What what fluid, Daniel? Like blood or sweat. Mm, you know? mm. Tears. Tears. 30% more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, no, I'm cool with that. It could also be like um, the nature of the moon relates to how you consume it. Like um, oh. the water moon, you obviously oh, could drink. Yeah. The, the air one, maybe that's what you inhale. Mm. Uh, fire, uh I don't know. Well, Earth, see, fire, maybe you eat. fire, it's like uh, you're smoking something, right? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so all of those work. Yeah, absolutely. Look at that. <laughs> That's dope. Yeah. Okay. So, well, we, we've got the three ones that still work. What was the moon? What, what did that one do? Was it like consumption? Like, yeah, like just eating. Yeah, or, exactly. Or even like rubbing on yourself, like a, a paint or a, like like a, like a yiffing type situation, Courtney? Or? <laughs> no, I, I mean, <laughs> like, like, um, <laughs> Like using pigments to kind of smear oh, on yourself. Oh, sure, 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 like sure, sure, sure. to yourself, which yeah. has cool uh, visuals attached to it, which I could see being like now the uh, the people who are using that earth element, they're like smearing themselves in some sort of pigment that makes them very mm. noticeable to others. Yeah, I'm I'm getting, um, oh, it was Ian. Ian during yeah, one of our uh, things with yeah. the woad, exactly. Yeah, just like smearing yourself with this oh and of course the material is going to be radioactive it might not actually be radioactivity but it's going to have that same effect as toxic yeah Yeah. oh 100 percent. yeah 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 which i mean you think about pigments in real life too and like cadmium and all these other things that are very not good to put on your skin but (laughs) yeah uh, again, again, you're skipping to my second tenant, oh, but sorry. we're gonna get we're sorry. gonna get there. We're gonna get there. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of Courtney, you you start us off. So why don't you hit us with your second tenant? Yep. So mine uh, goes away from the sweet moon transformation stuff that we've got going. But uh, I was thinking because the surface of the planet has become dangerous to travel on because of you know the the moon stuff falling from the sky. Uh, <laughs> transit tunnels from the pre-apocalyptic mm. civilizations have become invaluable for travel and i guess even living like there could still be functioning subways and cities mm. even if they mm. they're able to power them and maybe trains between cities uh which i just realized if you've got trains used outside of tunnels they could be reinforced with those uh ultra strong metals from the earth moon so we've got Armored trains, potentially, and obligatory shout out to our mm-hmm. patron Kaiser. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kaiser just did the the Leonardo meme from uh Django and Chain. Like, <laughs> first you had my attention, now you have yeah. my interest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um yeah, that sounds dope. So you know me, I'm also a big sucker for like public transit, and I love mm-hmm. the idea that like underneath the surface is like a highway of like incredibly important like tunnels and transit. Systems. Yeah. I'm down with that 100%. You also have demon trains. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> can, can you describe demon yes. trains? Because I only know it from the Demon Slayer uh, arc. So what are you, what are you talking or about? There's the, uh, the monster train computer game. Oh yeah, fucking monster train is great. That's great. <laughs> I mean, and it is also literal demons from hell fighting yeah. angels. So yeah, I'm yeah. down with that too. Yeah. Well, cause she said um, she said that they some of the trains might be reinforced with uh, radioactive materials and then you might have a demon train like in the dark tower series which would not be nice but funny oh, was there a demon train in dark Tower? Oh, yeah. <laughs> i didn't read past the first book 
I believe his name is Blaine, if I'm remembering correctly. It's a <laughs> evil possessed train. Oh, the train has a name. I see. Yes. Yes. I see. Uh, the train is possessed. I don't, I, I know it was evil and it spoke to them. I don't remember if it was a okay. ghost or something. I so is this like a Christine situation where the car is possessed by someone? So the train is possessed by someone. Sword. I mean, I don't, I read <laughs> that book a long time ago, but I, it, it was very different than other Stephen King books, the dark tower, because it was his baby. Mm-hmm. This is an end of all though, <laughs> but it was, <laughs> it was, a, it's probably for me, it was Stephen King's best. Mm-hmm. His heart is clearly in that book, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, good things about the Dark Tower series, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Not to distract though from what Courtney was saying. <laughs> um, so, so what I was going to ask is, I, I think this tenant specifies, although you know we can ignore this because it has too many. Um, <laughs> that that their civilization is in a very particularly ancient yeah. state, which would be interesting in them encountering and um, interacting with the rem the dying earth sort of remnants of this high technology mm-hmm. because it would be interesting how you would depict that if you were writing this or if you were presenting it you know as a game because you couldn't say what these structures are outright you'd have to describe them and so yeah. the the experience of the person reading or interacting with it would be like oh i see what this actually is but it's spoken of in terms that are not um obvious mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah they're described as moving houses or moving Mm-hmm. buildings or mm-hmm. something but yeah it did say like ancient tech has mm-hmm. survived somewhat and can be recovered and used and mm-hmm. i do kind of like the juxtaposition between like bronze and iron age uh for the most part but then you have like semi-functioning trains and subway mm-hmm. systems which also kind of calls back to our uh setting land of a thousand steam engines which was like oh yeah ancient yeah. greece and rome and stuff with uh trains I like the idea that these trains, like Courtney said, are half functioning Mm -hmm. and and the peoples of the world have found a way around the original. So like normally it'd be a steam engine or like some kind of like electric motor, like the third rail or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. I like the idea that they have found a way to use the trains without using the original power system that was involved. So whether that be like you have mages whose sole responsibility it is to like cast magic into an engine that propels it forward or something along those lines like i love the idea that it's like we've got this structure set up we don't know how it works we're going to like shove things and people and resources Mm -hmm. at it until it does work you know Mm -hmm. because it's like they very clearly see the value of these things right yeah because like part of my thought was like if it's that dangerous to travel on the surface if you got constant like moon chunks raining down on you Mm. then how would trade work how would just travel like how would communities meet up and right like join together and communicate Mm. and it seemed like tunnels were Mm. uh, important to that now now one thing i do kind of want to um clarify here i i don't see the entirety of the world being underground because i don't see the entirety of the world above being constantly rained down upon by meteors right or I just mean like constant as in like it's enough of a threat that you don't want to like right. go out wandering. No, no, no. I, I, I completely agree. And that's where I was going to suggest that like there are in fact like and this could like shape the overall like structures in the architecture of the world itself where like maybe they're like curved in such a way where it's like they actually mm-hmm. often have like an umbrella effect or something like that. So cities have like this weird kind of like dome effect when you're in them. So it like protects the people because it's like it's necessary, right? So it's like it doesn't happen all the time, but it happens enough where it's like they've shaped the architecture around this phenomena. And -hmm. and I just think that that's a really cool thing. It's like, hey, you are safe in the cities, but maybe not elsewhere. Because it's not like you're like, oh, wow, I can't wait to go camping underneath the stars. (laughs) And you're just like, like shredded by a fucking buckshot worth of meteor, you know, like it doesn't work that way. Another question I have is um, regarding magic, since I'm seeing this as a scan of scarcity post-apocalypse, I think it would be interesting if um, only the demon-empowered um, individuals who we've established have a certain sacred status are the ones with supernatural power. Mm-hmm. So that yeah. the monsters yeah. become more terrifying and the average person has to rely really on the old technology and it's only the these kind of you know 
outside of science entities, these people that are given power by the demon that can do mm-hmm. things that defy, you know, the known science. Mm-hmm. I think that's really fun too, because it adds like this kind of caveat that yes, magic exists and it exists within these demon infused kind of like people, but you know, like those people have to continuously like check themselves and make sure that they can keep their power in check and they're not being overwhelmed by the kind of demonic corruption that's eating away at their soul. But at the same time, some of them are just like, Hey, I just want a job being a train conductor or like, Hey, I just need Mm -hmm. to make sure that like I can get through the rest of it. So like, there's this weird kind of push pull where it's like, there's a a tantalizing amount of power that you can get and like how you choose to use it is based on that. Yeah. I I think that's kind of an interesting concept to run with. Yeah. And it works with like just the whole idea of like deal with the devil and how much of yourself do you want to give up? And, um, yeah. With magic too, that could also be a protective thing with uh, settlements and like travelers where different types of magic, maybe you could handle the outside world differently. Like maybe air mages can create essentially shields in the air above them Mm -hmm. or um, fire mages can blast meteor chunks out of the sky before they hit them, stuff like that. Mm. And obviously, right, like you'd want earth mages as like a, a really powerful ally to like, hey, we can just move the earth you know, like away, but of course they're like horribly corrupted compared to the other ones, yeah, right? They're the ones that you like don't really want to associate with, but they yeah. are super powerful. So maybe yeah. you you. Yeah. I'm almost thinking that like that's the missing component. Like the if these settlements I I, I also wonder about the scarcity of the people, right? So like if the settlements mm. probably aren't huge civilizations, they're probably like small groups, but right. I imagine them only having one of these demon types, right? among right. them so maybe there's 50 people they have the one demon mage or whatever that's mm-hmm. available and i also imagine like the earth ones probably aren't even the type you can have in a civilization <laughs> like maybe you right. can make an appeal to one by tricking it but it's probably mm-hmm. quite monstrous i bet you know yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. you, you kind of have to trick it or like be very careful about the deal that you make with it because it's half mm-hmm. mad already you know that kind of thing for you <laughs> that's his plan exactly yes. yeah yeah or, or it's like you can bargain with it like, hey, I will sacrifice X amount of goats and or babies if you like help us with this particular thing, you know, uh-huh. like, yeah, it's it's definitely one of those deals where you're like, are they going to honor the bargain? We literally cannot trust it, even if it says yes and, and it like shows up like we have to be careful around these things. Yeah. Um. As for as for population density, Daniel, I had it in mind that we're looking at like middle ages. So like, for example. In the Middle Ages, the population of Paris, which was the largest city in Europe, I think was only about 100,000 people. And that was like astounding at the time, whereas most other settlements were much, much smaller in result. So like I I have that kind of mindset where, where I'm thinking about like the largest places are much smaller than what we're even used to now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that works for a post-apocalypse. I mean, given the destruction that the moon would have caused in the first place and then the aftermath of like all the dust in the air affecting health and agriculture and then of course the toxins and radioactivity that it's leaving behind too Mm -hmm. Mm we definitely get pretty fucked up yes which is a great segue (laughs) to my second tenant actually uh because my second tenant and i know i've been kind of hyping it up a little bit but like mostly i just wanted to talk about like the um the use of minerals in this particular setting and how interesting they are. Right. Because when I'm thinking about like lycanthropes, when I'm thinking about like, you know, various folkloric monsters and stuff like that, a very common thing is, Oh, Fae do not like cold iron, which is just iron, but whatever, or like werewolves don't like silver or demons don't like silver because of the purity and blah, 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 blah. Right. I wanted to edify that in the minerals that are raining from the sky, right? So yes, you have these very powerful lycanthrope demon things and each of them have their own element or or mineral that they are weak to. Mm -hmm. And harvesting these minerals is so important, one, for self-protection and two, for rituals and three, because it's just what else am I going to do with my time in the post-apocalypse? I'm going to become a miner. However, 
all of these minerals have some kind of side effect. Like um, I, I was looking up uh, silver poisoning where your skin becomes blue. And, and yeah. I want that to be the case with every special mineral that exists. There are swaths of population that are stained blue, that are hurt or affected by the ground and the minerals that they work with. And I think that to me, that that also symbolizes kind of the wild, unchecked, corrupting power of the earth elemental demon that's just been like, no, if you're going to work with minerals, you're going to be corrupted by me in some way, whether it be small, whether it be big, like you're going to get silver poisoning or you're going to get some, there's going to be something fucked up with you no matter what mineral you messed with. I like it. Yeah, like I think, yeah, I think it's essential if we're gonna have like a, a any kind of like can't there be adjacent thing? And I also mm-hmm. wonder if um, the minerals that each elemental demon worshiper, whatever, um, is vulnerable to is the mineral from the moon that imprisons their demon, since that's oh. what you know. <sighs> yeah, and that would make cool. sense that the earth demons are a little bit more powerful now because although th- their vulnerability is more available to people, they're more powerful mm-hmm. because they've been dropped onto the earth and. The Earth mm-hmm. stuff is scattered everywhere, and it, it apparently is its own form of radioactive, which probably would derive from the type of material it is. But it's more readily available because it's cluttering the Earth, you know. Mm. Whereas the other ones aren't as readily available because they come from those moons. Interesting. I was actually wondering the opposite. Like, if the one that each element is weak to is kind of their opposing element, like fire is weak to the water, mineral... Uh, you get Earth. that Pokemon shit out of here, Courtney. <laughs> Fighting type is weak to, you know. <laughs> I mean, there could be relationships, like yeah. perhaps like, so because I the reason why I was drawn to mapping it to the moon is because we already established that the demons trap yeah. them. But no, I right. do like that. All the moons are a form of imprisonment. So I could yeah. see like yeah, yeah, yeah. one having a lesser negative effect, say, if it doesn't align, you know. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So So I want to take Courtney's idea and I want to flip it. Uh, so, yes, there are there's the minerals that imprison the demon lords. Right. What if there were minerals that enhance the demon lord, mm. you know, based on the oh. element as well? And that way you can double up the importance of mineral gathering as well, where it's like, yes, this mineral will, in fact, harm water demons. But this one, oh, boy, they'll make them so much stronger. But they like kind of like um, what's the Sanderson series where they burn through metal uh, and stuff. Born. There you go. So like in Mistborn, they can like burn through minerals and stuff like that. But like it's the opposite. So it's like I'm being enhanced by this particular mineral. Yeah, that that's that's the basic premise that I want to get out there. I think that's a cool way that we can incorporate both ideas. But, you know, like have those push pull elements involved, you know? Yeah. And yeah. also something else you had brought up when you were explaining your tenant was mining as an yes. occupation. And like that immediately made me think of like, black lung from coal mining oh, yeah. and like yeah. what kind of shit would happen uh, if you're mining these like elemental minerals magical mm-hmm. minerals oh yeah absolutely a hundred percent and mind you some of them might not even be like perceived side effects necessarily right or like they, they might not be seen as like all bad mm-hmm. but it could be one of those things where it's like hey you know i've been huffing you know fire elemental dust for so long that like Flames don't really hurt me as much, but it's also mm-hmm. like corroding my frontal cortex. So I'm starting to lose touch with reality, you know, like yeah. that kind of thing where it's just like, you know, it, it mimics the magic process of like true demon summoning and like demon possession, but on a much, much smaller and inconsequential scale. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then there's also just like the idea of long term effects, like you said, that might not be realized right away. And even right. stuff with like modern technology that we kind of lose track of, although since capitalism is the villain always, it's partially, you know, tied into companies hiding their research. But anyway, uh, just, <laughs> just things that yep. like had been used in the past that we found out, whoops, maybe this isn't so good, like lead in water pipes and... Or gasoline, yeah. Or yes, lead in gasoline, which was horrendous. And then now how we're finding like plastics mm. and... Um, Allegedly... Allegedly, lead being so prevalent was one of the things that people are postulating that led to like serial killer booms and stuff like that. So it turns out that like serial killers and like violence in general, like has gone down precipitously since we took lead out of a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I find that to be really interesting in general. But 
whatever we're, we're, we're moving away. But yeah, no, it's, it's just interesting how those things can build up over time. And unless you're tracking them on like a population level, you mm. just wouldn't realize. So maybe there is like, if you're focusing on mining fire elementals, like maybe your population does become mm. more uh, agitated and more violent yeah. over time. Oh yeah. And what is perceived to be a cultural thing is actually yeah. like a, min like a literal mineral problem yeah. that's going on. Yeah. That that's really interesting. Yeah. 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 So are we at the point where we're ready to do a recap and go over the tenets once more? Maybe, but I also wanted to go back to the prompt itself. Cause one thing we haven't talked about oh, at all yeah. is that, that superstructure and higher That's entity. True. So maybe we don't need, to, maybe it's like a, a mystical thing now. Like nobody sure. really knows what it is. It's like a God, like or angelic mm -hmm. kind of thing where it's just a mystery up there. I'm going to be real with you. I totally thought that Daniel was going to take care of that one in the tenant. <laughs> I mean, the, the problem with this, the problem with the problem is it has so much going on because um, see how interested we were in some of the more minor details. And I'm not trying mm -hmm. to fault the submitter. Like the submitter gave, mm -hmm. gave a very, he's something that they're clearly working on and they're interested in. They've explored it to some degree, right? Mm -hmm. But when we're looking at a premise, right? A premise can't have too many really interesting things. Like a BDO tends to take center stage because it's pretty freaking big, right? But yeah, here you yeah. also have like lycanthropy added at the very end, which is a big thing thematically and conceptually. Mm -hmm. And we have elemental moons which is a big thing. These are the things that stood out to us. All gotcha. the particulars, right? The, the particulars are how these things are supposed to work. Mm -hmm. That's the, the glue that we're supposed to come up with. So we're going to ignore that right off the bat, which is what <laughs> we did, right? Yeah. So, so here, right. I think personally, this ring isn't relevant to the setting we created anymore. Mm -hmm. sure. It could certainly be shoehorned in, but at this point, like, why? You know, that's yeah. my feeling. Well, I, I think I think it's just that where where does our camera tend to focus? Where does our mm -hmm. gaze tend to linger? And it's like, yes, we're we're earthbound. We're looking down at the civilizations, on the people, on the lycanthropes, all that stuff. But then those people, they will look up and they will gaze into a, a shattered sky. Right. Mm -hmm. That is being held back by this thing. And they're like, frankly, we don't know how it's being done. And there are people who definitely care about it and they're watching it. But I think that our attention, like Daniel's saying, is like is definitely more affixed to the things that are like earthbound and like what's their day to day like. And like mm -hmm. the, the celestial elements that they're kind of focused on are more like for the highfalutin, you know, like the the philosophers of the world and the religious folks of the world when we're more interested in like how how do they poop how do they get around underneath <laughs> these meteor showers you know like that kind of thing. right yeah. and i do think it it makes sense to sort of not totally ignore but leave in the background at least for the time being because of that because it's like right. especially if these people if you know however long this catastrophe happened however long these civilizations fell like they don't know what it is it's always been there to them it's just right. like a ring in the sky Mm -hmm. Well, to be clear, though, what I'm suggesting, like everything what you guys just said, I agree with. But what I'm suggesting is that from a narrative perspective, though, this is the odd man out. So we have mm -hmm. to make a decision mm -hmm. as crafters of this world. You know, if you if you leave the ring in the sky and people can see it and mm -hmm. it's up there, it doesn't mean that at, from the narrative, from the meta perspective, we can ignore it as having a, a importance in the story. Right. Because you can't. You can't put a mechanical ring around the world and then just say, mm -hmm. oh, it's there and we don't know why, but whatever. It has no oh, effect. Yeah. I just meant more like for now, because who knows, maybe the twist will I was illuminate just about to that. Say that. Sure, yeah, exactly. sure. Yeah. There could be like a tantalizing hook or a tantalizing thing that will explain everything, right? Like it's it's the red circle and arrow in a YouTube thumbnail. It's like, wow, <laughs> look at this. You know, it, you yeah. know like that, it, it yeah. could be, but we, we we need to get to that point first. You know, mm -hmm. I fucking hate those YouTube thumbnails. <laughs> <laughs> but let's leave it open to, for exploration and like interrogation later on. How's that sound? Can we can yeah. we just put a pin in it for the time being? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. fabulous. Okay, let's do the recap and then we can twist it. And then we'll go from there. So, Daniel, you started us off. Remind us of your first tenet, sir. No werewolves. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, can't, like can't there be asked to be something um, re-envisioned? It was my, my premise. Sure. And considering that lycanthropes are effectively like demon worshipping, like magic users, I feel like we've done that pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, one thing I suppose that I don't think we've really touched on is like there is a transformational aspect, right? So, so I think that one thing that we might want to codify here or, or talk about a little bit more, at least, is when they're in their lycanthrope form, right? Because it's a it's a human, and then they take on this form. I, I had mentioned that it's this kind of like you're literally burning your soul for this power, and so like that's how it manifests in this like kind of like hazy, smoky, or or actually it could probably depend on you know, which demon you worship. Right. Mm. But like, is, is that the kind of transformation and the look that you want? Is that they're crackling with this demonic energy? Is that what we're looking at when it comes to transformation and the look? What are we thinking? I don't care. It's up to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, don't care. as long as they're not literally turning into wolves, that's all I don't want. <laughs> or are there other violent mammals? <laughs> I can, I'll take the screaming, um, the, the bear from Annihilation. I'll take that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, oh, that's right. weird right but i mean yeah. uh if it's just some angry bear yeah. come on come on yeah you know so so daniel is coming out as fervently anti-furry is what i'm yeah. hearing like you do yeah. not want to answer my, all right again yeah. I, i'm going to say i would prefer it if it's like when you transform air quotes that like there is this thing it's it's like a, it's like a, a spirit animal or a spirit demon that kind of wraps itself around you and that's what the transformation looks like so in my brain that's what it's going to look like yeah so i guess that loops in with my first tenet um that each moon is associated with different types of animal shapeshifters and mm. i had said animal just because that's what the the prompt was originally implying but i'm okay not doing uh you know animals exactly but mm. i would like it to be a transformation that involves like a physical shift towards something associated with those elements. So maybe, maybe the earth ones that are, you know, more monstrous now that their moon is like embedded in the earth, maybe they are more like the, the annihilation bears where they look really fucked up when they transform. Mm, yeah. 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 See, see that to me is really fun because it's like, it's not as though there's a separation. It's like you're being literally taken over and transformed physically. Whereas the other mm -hmm. kind of manifestations to me, again, in my brain, they are like spiritual or at least like kind of uh, look spiritual in their kind of transformation. Whereas this is like, oh, no, this is fucking with their body. This is like transforming them in a in a severe way. And that to me is really cool and interesting. I guess I would like all of them to affect the body in some way, but I, I do think that, yeah, the difference is like the, the level of the effect where like maybe, um, the fire one, like you, you start to heat up and your, mm -hmm. your skin kind of has a fiery glow to it, or, uh, you start seeing like almost lava, like cracks in your skin or something to that effect, mm -hmm. but you still look human. Whereas the earth ones are like, like monsters now they, mm -hmm. they become these can we have them glow getting. with radiation as well, please? Because that's uh, just that would just be cool. That is cool. Yeah. There so it's like go. annihilation bear looking thing with like glowing from its insides. That's cool. Yeah. Uh again, going back to Chernobyl, that whole kind of like whitish, horrible. I, I I'm making myself sad thinking about that <laughs> series again. But like that kind of like haze and glow to it, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, now that the props department has figured out all these special effects. <laughs> hey, man, aesthetics, aesthetics matter. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. No. I mean, it's like, it's like funny. Like in my mind, it's like, um, I don't know or care. <laughs> Giving it over to the production department. And then they thought it was like, really cool. And you're like, that looks great, guys. <laughs> Can you make it pop some more? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. it pop a little bit, though. <laughs> <laughs> This is again, I, I love this because it, it very much shows like how how different our approaches are to setting and world building in general. It's like what we care about diverges mm -hmm. pretty substantially in my brain. Like I think visually very often. Right. And, and, and to me, like seeing that cinematic shot, seeing, you know, like what the effects look like matters in, in a pretty significant way in some ways, you know. Yeah, not surprisingly, I'm an extremely visual thinker, too. And mm. yeah, picturing these as like movies or premiere HBO uh, TV series. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, similar for me. I I'm not a graphic artist, but yeah, in my brain, I definitely think cinematically when it comes to this stuff. 
Anyway, let's get on to my first tenet. Each of the moons are a prison for a particular demon lord of that element. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's been explored pretty well. I think that the demon element kind of taking over the lycanthropy aspect, the transformational aspect, and then turning that into like the the replacement for magic, that Mm -hmm. all works. I'm happy with how that works too. Yeah, I, I am curious, like, how the demons became imprisoned or what imprisoned them, mm-hmm. but maybe we can figure that out. Yeah, the, the obvious and the easy answer is the thing that's protecting you, yeah, right? That's right. the easy answer, but yeah. we don't necessarily have to go there. We, we got to go to Daniel's second tenant first. Uh, my second tenant is that the lycanthropes aren't... Um aren't viewed as uh, evil like they're not an affliction and they're viewed as sacred um except for the radioactive ones Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i i think that we could probably explore that a little bit more but i think that we're going to need factions to really uh flesh that concept out yeah i mean i'm happy where we are i feel like um Mm -hmm. we did establish that there's a scarcity Mm -hmm. of these people and they're important and people Mm -hmm. don't view them as like the enemy um, right. except perhaps the ones that are roaming around being bastards you know? <laughs> right yeah okay oh man i've got ideas for that now oh as soon as you said that i'm like wait a minute that's actually really cool okay <laughs> anyway we're we're moving we're okay um, you're happy with it courtney what is your second tenant uh that was that because of the moon meteor showers uh then the dangerous stuff on the surface uh tunnels from the previous civilizations have become really important for traveling uh, and surviving. And there are not necessarily uh, fully functioning like subways and trains, but people have kind of figured out how to work with that existing technology to get some movement going between communities. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then also touched on potentially armored trains, which could also be demonic or toxic in some way because of the, Mm -hmm. the earth minerals being used to reinforce them. Yeah, that's that's kind of an interesting aspect, too, where it's like, do the minerals themselves invite possession in some way? Maybe. I mean, they could be seen perhaps as a conduit for the demon that imprisons them. Oh, so like that's how you communicate yeah. with the demon lords is through mm-hmm. these various elements. Mm-hmm. That's how you make the pacts and stuff like that. Yeah, OK, that that, that sounds really cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. that works. Cool. All right. And my second tenet was uh, complicated. Uh, it was basically all of the minerals. Uh, oh, man. What, how, how can I put this succinctly? Go back and listen to it. The one, the thing that I said before. Um, no, no. Is it, so th- this is what we ended up with. All of the minerals have an associated moon and demon with them that either imprison or enhance said power's moon demon right Uh, (laughs) but more importantly i wanted to make sure that the mineral gathering is super important in the world and no matter what you do the minerals will afflict the person gathering them that's Mm -hmm. the best i got and i feel like again like we we've worked through that pretty well they're like toxic is what you're they're toxic in some way and we also established that um they are like just like in traditional lycanthropy kind of curses the they have vulnerabilities like that map to the moon and to the type of creature i'm so glad that someone was paying attention yes yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And then i think courtney added that um the other moons have lesser they cause lesser vulnerability too so like there's a relationship right yeah yeah right exactly. not totally sure like where we're going to decide on with what the relationship is, but there's definitely like an effect there. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I had suggested like empowerment and like vulnerability and I'm still cool with that yeah. concept. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause I was saying like uh, the opposing moons could make right. the elements weaker. Yeah, exactly. And again, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that idea for the most part. Um, cool. All right. So with all of those out of the way, we got all the we got all the tenants recapped. We can now roll for our twist and see what we get. And our twist this time is our twist is on second thought, make it a happy ending. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney hates this one. Uh, of course. <laughs> I'm glad that we have uh, another episode because this is going to be a challenge for me to think about. 
I know you're like, uh, like every fiber of your being is resisting this. Happy. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, yeah. So we're going to leave it there. Uh, again, a huge thank you to James V for not only submitting, but also becoming a patron. Uh, and another huge thank you for Cam for also becoming a patron as well. Uh, your support and your help are always appreciated. And, like really thank you so much from the bottom of the host's heart, because I really appreciate it. That's really cool that you're showing support and love for the podcast. Uh, of course, if you want us to build your world, you can always go to our website, worldbuildwithus.com, where you can click the link, follow the instructions. And within a reasonable amount of time, we'll be building your world. Now, just want to clarify here, just in case there is some kind of confusion, doing that is free. There's no payment. There's no patronage required for you to submit a prompt. We'll build your stuff. You don't have to support us financially at all. I want to clarify, submitting is free. You do not have to pay us money to get your prompt submitted. However, if you do go to our Patreon with a link for that in the description, you do get twice the length of your particular setting when you submit one. So if you're interested in us going really deep with your particular concept, go ahead and become a patron and we'll give you twice the amount of time. Not necessarily twice the amount of effort, but definitely twice the amount of time. Um, so again, go to our Patreon for that. A huge thank you. If you want to follow us on social media, we're on Twitter at Let's World Build. And if you want to come and chat with us in more direct fashion, you can go to our Discord with the link for that in the description and on our website and come chat with us. Tell us what you think elemental demons would manifest as visually um, or not. Whatever. Come chat with us about anything. And uh, again, almost forgot about it again here. Uh, we have a new YouTube channel. So if you want to go and support us on the YouTubes, you can go and click subscribe. You can click like. You can leave a comment telling us what a demon would look like, you know, if all that good stuff, whatnot. So go to our YouTube with a link for that again in the description of this episode and probably on our website by now. So yeah, that, that's going to do it for this episode of World Build With Us. Remember that we love you very much and we're going to get through this together until next week.